Good afternoon, everyone. So thank you so much for attending our second talk for 30 days of ML. And I hope everyone had already eaten their lunch so that you're prepared for our next set of topic that we will be covering for today. We're glad that you are attending and joining us. And uh, we have observed that you guys are coming from um, different parts of the Philippines. And thank you so much for spending your weekend to learn with us today. So our speaker um, this afternoon is a graduate of um, the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science at De La Salle University. And he also took um, Master's of Science in Computer Science at National Taiwan University of Science and Technology, at, also at De La Salle University, and also currently right now, He's pursuing um, his PhD in computer science. Uh, I will not um, prolong um, to, to introduce our speaker, um, Aaron Antokia, who will be speaking and um, sharing with us uh, Notebook and Pandas for Beginners. Um, hello, Aaron. How are you? Hello, sir. Okay lang po. Kayo, kumusta po? Okay, lang then. Um, ready ka na ba to share um, this topic? Ano ba yung, what, ano ba yung, ano, kailangan i-expect ng mga participants natin for this topic? So, by the end of this lecture, hopefully marunong na tayong gumamit ng pandas no, in exploring our data, in exploratory data analysis. So, yun yung okay. pwede yung expect by the end of this um, session. Alright, so, alam ko excited na yung mga uh, viewers natin today. No? So I'll, I'll give you the floor, Aaron, to uh, jumpstart and talk over Notebook and Pandas. Okay, sir. Thank you. Let me just full screen this. So good afternoon. So I'm Aaron Anchokia, and I'm here to talk about um, exploring data using Pandas. So um, just a brief background. So I'm currently a faculty member of the software technology department at De La Salle University. And my main focus in research is computer vision and deep learning. So, sabi na ni Sir Ralph kanina, I graduated also from De La Salle. And uh, my MS degree, uh, I have two, that is from the National Taiwan University of Science and Technology and De La Salle University. Uh, these are my latest, latest papers. And uh, most of my papers are actually um, about computer vision and machine learning. So let's go over the outline of the talk for today. For the uh, first part, we'll be discussing some sort of theories, especially on exploratory data analysis. Then after that, we'll have some sort of example that you can play around with. Okay, so we are going to apply what we have learned in the theories that we're going to learn today. So for the first part, this is the outline of our talk. We'll be discussing data. And uh, how do we represent data? We'll also discuss the common operations that we do on our data sets. How do we clean our data set before we actually go to the exploratory data analysis? Then after that, we'll talk about what do we do with our data after we have properly explored it. So just a brief introduction about data. We all know that um, when we perform our research or our um, when we conduct papers or write papers, we always want to answer some sort of question. And in order for us to answer that question, we have to have this data, which is the background or the backbone of our statistical investigation. So this is just a, an introduction or a um, definition of what a data is according to open intro statistics. And we all know that data is all around us. Actually, it's very important, especially nowadays, that we are um, looking at data every day, especially um, here are some examples. Um, right now, very important yung uh, COVID-19 data natin, di ba? which is being released by the government. Also, this one is an example of the tally of COVID cases um, worldwide. Another example of a very important data, especially for the Philippines, is um, the weather data. Di ba? Lagi tayo natatamaan ng mga bagyo at iba't ibang um, natural disasters. So this is very important for us, right? And uh, lastly, uh, just a few examples, um, yung traffic data. Because we all know that um, uh, madalas sa mga cities natin traffic. So um, this 
uh, examples of data can prove that data is actually all around us. But the problem here is, how do we utilize the data? How do we convert this real-world data in such a way that we can perform some sort of analysis, right? And this real data, we can harvest it. And the first thing that we have to do is to represent it to represent it in a way that the computer can understand and can analyze, right? So the first part is on data representation. And this is one of the common representations of data whenever we extract it from the real world and convert it into some form that the computer can understand. We can uh, put it in a data matrix, okay? Um, for some people who are familiar with programming, you can call this a 2D array, right? So, kamukha siya ng 2D array natin. And in a data matrix, at least in this example, a single row is an observation. Okay, we call that an observation. In other fields, let's say in machine learning, we also call this an instance, right? This represents something in your data set, represent an observation, a single entity in your data set. And on the other hand, yung mga columns natin, this represents a variable, right? In, in computer science or, sorry, in machine learning, we often call this our features. In this example, we have here a tabular data with ID numbers, the section of a specific um, student, and his or her grades sa CCProg1, CCProg2. So these are sample um, classes, let's say. These are actually classes in DLSU. And we all know that each variable is of a certain data type. Right, so for example, here uh, our section is of a string data type. Well, on the other hand, this ccprog1, ccprog2 columns are actually um, uh, floating numbers, right? So, ibat iba sila ng data type. And we are going to utilize panda, okay, or pandas, that is short for panel data. This is a Python package that we'll go, we're going to use in order for us to represent our data into vectors and matrices, right? So there are actu actually other um, libraries that we can use that includes NumPy, the plotting library, SciPy, and Scikit-Learn. Um, so um, I, I think was, for this session, we're also going to use NumPy and the plotting library. NumPy is specific for optimized basic uh, mathematic operations. Um, you will, um, I don't know, you will um, enjoy using NumPy, especially if you're performing uh, data mining, uh, machine learning, because it really um, gives you the solution very fast compared to uh, iterative solutions. The, this one is for our plotting, for our graphs, for our visualization. These two, hindi natin gagamitin siya for today, but these are other um, Python packages that you can explore if you're performing machine learning. Now, um, in Pandas, we have these two main data structures that we can use. That is your data frame and series. Looking at this illustration, meron kaunting difference lang. Data frame is a 2D representation. That means that you can have multiple rows and multiple columns. While on the other hand, series, you can imagine that this is a 1D array, okay? Um, isa lang yung uh, value or column that you can store it to it, that you can store to it. And if you can imagine it, uh, data frame is just a combination of multiple series, right? So for example, here we have multiple different distinct series. You can actually combine them, uh, aligning them according to their index so that we can form a data frame, which is a 2D representation. More often than not, we represent our data set as a data frame because our data set contains a lot, lots of observations and variables. So, minsan, from the data frame, we're going to select some, some columns in order for us to perform some uh, operation. These are just basic intuitions that we might want to understand before we perform some operations on our series and data frame. If, for example, you have here a series and you want to uh, conduct some sort of um, operation that, that is involving a scalar. So it will um, compute for it member by member or element by element. In this example, we have 20 greater than 20, that's false. 
So this will yield the Boolean value false, 22 greater than 20, that's true, and so on and so forth. So um, element by element, if you have a scalar here, can also operate on two series, right? So in this example, we have this series and another series. We are dividing the values that is uh, element by element. So at index 0 divided by the value in this index 0, so that's 10 divided by 20, that's 0 0.5. Okay, so the operation aligns element-wise. Let's talk about common operations. And these operations, usually, pinaperform natin to kapag nag uh, operate tayo sa data, especially on uh, exploratory data analysis. We have here eight different common operations that we're going to talk about today. That is, of course, viewing your data set information, selecting columns, selecting rows, filtering rows, you, have, you also have the option to sort your rows, to add new columns, to aggregate your data, and group your data according to a specific variable. So let's go over them one by one. The first thing that you have to do if you have a data set is, of course, view the information about it. There is a function in Pandas that you can use in order for you to get this, right? So you will see here the list of all the columns that you have, the number of values inside that column and what data type it is, okay? So that's the first thing that you have to do. And there are uh, other operations that we need to perform when we are performing um, some analysis on our data. Uh, I have here some sort of examples. Uh, the first one is we're selecting columns. So meron tayo dito example na IDs. Uh, this is a data frame containing IDs uh, section of a specific uh, student and the grade for a class, let's say CS model. So if, for example, you're selecting this column, that will yield from a data frame, it will output a series, okay? The only difference being is a data frame um, uh, is composed of multiple series, right? You can also select multiple columns. In this example, we're selecting the ID column and the CS model column so that we can produce a very a smaller data frame rather which contains only id and cs model rates right this is um you can imagine that this is similar to what you're doing in databases minsan kapag nag uh, select ka ng uh, certain values in your database you only want to return specific um columns para hindi mabigat yung operations there are also options to select rows in this example, we're selecting the second observation. This will yield to a series, right? This is a series because you're just selecting one instance or one observation, okay? In this example, we're selecting multiple rows, which will yield a data frame. So from a data frame, we're going to select the second to the fourth observation, which will also yield a data frame. Later, we'll see some applications of this, okay? Um, this one, uh, this one we're selecting uh, observations wherein their grade is uh, greater than or equal to 3.5, okay? We have a very big data frame, but we only want to consider those na ang grade ay above 3.5, okay? Um, usually, gusto mong makita kung sino siguro yung mga outstanding students, ganyan. So these are just examples of it example applications and we also have this option this operation to sort our rows uh, in our example here we have a data frame then we sorted the rows according to the grade right uh, by the way in dlsu the highest grade is 4.0 so this one is the lowest grade 1.0 and if you fail that's 0, 0.0 so looking at this example we are arranging it um, increasingly right yung pinakamaliit which is 1.0, <clears throat> up until 4.0. Another operation that you can do to your data is you want to add new columns. This is specific if you're performing some sort of um, feature engineering. But in this example, we're just basically converting these values, these numerical values, to uh, categorical value. So kapag ang grade mo greater than or equal to 3.5, at least in this example, that is already excellent, right? So it aligns in our example earlier when we want to get a chunk or just a subset of our data, 
such that that is the grades of those students are greater than or equal to 3.5. This is very important, the aggregation of data. And ito yung usual na ginagamit natin kapag tayo nagpe-perform ng exploratory data analysis. Right? So, for example, we have a data set containing the grades of all the students for a specific term. We want to get the mean performance or the mean grade of the students, right? Um, we can do that in, in Pandas. And we'll do that later when we're performing our exploratory data analysis. Hindi lang mean yung pwede mong kunin. You can also get the median and, of course, the mode. And all of these statistics that are readily available to us. This also... It, this is also important. We have here, um, we group the data set first according to a specific variable. In this case, we are grouping them according to the section. So section seven, uh, S17 and S18 before we get the summary statistic. In this case, we want to get what is the minimum grade for that section and the maximum grade for a specific section. So pinagsama-sama muna natin si S17. This, that is ID 0, 2, and 3. Gusto natin makuha alin ba yung minimum nila at maximum. In this example, the uh, mac, uh, the minimum is 2.5 and the maximum is 3.5. On the other hand, for those students from S18, the minimum is 1.0 and the maximum is 4.0. These are some operations that you might want to do when you're performing exploratory data analysis. Now, before we perform that, before we perform exploratory data analysis, we want to perform some sort of cleaning because um, when you convert a data set to, let's say, uh, the representation that we have shown earlier, more often than not, your data set is dirty. Okay? Meron dyang mga inconsistencies that you have to address first in order for you to perform your analysis better or correctly. Right? There's actually a tweet about that. And in data science now or in other related fields, 80% of your time, you spend that uh, preparing your data, cleaning your data, and 20% of the time, you use that to complain about preparing the data. But it's true. Most of the time that you spend in uh, data science, in machine learning, you do that, um, you, you explore the data, you clean the data first before you run the algorithm on it. Right? So the bulk of the work is really on these parts. Now, um, these are the different um, issues that we can encounter when we have uh, a data set or we collected a data set. We have here the problem of multiple representations, incorrect data type, uh, default values. We have missing data, duplicate data, sometimes inconsistent yung format. Actually, these are some of the problems. Hindi ito lahat. So we'll go over them. Uh, very quickly lang um, to give you some examples. So we have here the problem of multiple representations. Imagine that you have a survey, tapos meron ka dong, um, you're asking the student to enter the year level. Okay? Uh, meron mga magta-type ng first for first year. Minsan ta-type lang nila one. Uh, minsan three. Right? Or the numer uh, Roman numeral two or four. Right? Those are, uh, this can be converted to some sort of common representation because you do not want um, that this representation first and one, hindi naman sila magkaibay, same sila, right? So you need to convert it to a common representation so that um, when you analyze your data, you can get the correct values, right? We also have this problem of incorrect data type, sometimes in your um, columns, specifically in numerical variables, meron dyan mga represented as strings. Okay? You need to change that to the correct data type. In this example, the 4 and the 5 here is represented as a character. Now, there are scenarios na yung buong variable na ka-represent siya as a, let's say, a string. But uh, it is actually representing a numerical value. Minsan hindi mo na siya kailangan i-convert to numerical value. The question that you, you, you want to ask before converting it to a numerical value is this. If you're going to perform some mathematical operation on the numerical variable, then you have to convert that to a numerical variable. 
Pero minsan, kapag hindi mo naman siya gagamitin sa uh, arithmetic operations, you do not need to convert it to uh, to numerical variable, okay? Or to, to a numerical data type. But again, it's case-to-case -case basis. Next, we have here default values. For example, you did a survey, you asked the uh, respondents to type the age. Merong mga hindi naglagay, nilagay uh, not applicable. Um, for these examples, we usually convert this to NAN, okay, or NAN, right? And um, our missing data in the data set, alam nga natin na nire-represent natin siya as NAN. So in this example, yung NAN, that is treated as if this is a missing data. We have here a data set containing the grades of students. How do we deal with this? There are different options. Again, case-to-case -case basis. The first option is you, you may delete the row with the missing data, especially if kaunti lang naman yung may missing data, right? And um, that's a solution. Especially in this example, hindi mo naman pwedeng bigyan siya ng grade kung wala naman talaga siyang grade, right? So you just delete it before you perform your analysis. There's another option. In this case, um, we're talking about age. For example, you surveyed a group of people 80 to 90 years old. So sila lang yung uh, respondents mo. You can actually approximate the value for the missing data because you know that um, you're just um, performing a survey within those age range. Um, pwede mo siyang i-approximate. That is according to, let's say, the mean of the, the mean age or the median age. It depends on the distribution of your data, right? But these are just two of the many options in order for us to deal with missing data. Now we have here duplicate data, right? So um, we have here the name and the age. Kita natin dito that Sansa 11 is re reported twice, but is here Rob. Uh, 12 years old, reported twice. So there is only one way to deal with duplicate rows, especially if it is caused by an error, diba? We just drop them, okay? You remove those values na um, umulit, may mga duplicate rows ka, tanggalin mo. But then again, case-to-case -case basis because there are some scenarios that really has duplicate data, Right? You have to analyze your, your problem. And next, we have this inconsistent format. Usually, ito sa mga, sa mga date, right? Kasi ang daming uh, formatting ng date or date time. So, you have to encode it into the same format para hindi tayo nalilito before we perform our analysis. So, that's it for um, data cleaning. Let's perform our analysis. And your exploratory data analysis is actually your first look at the data. If we're going to explain it uh, in one sentence, that is, this is your first look at the data, right? You're exploring. That's why it's called exploratory data analysis. And it actually involves two steps, or at least these steps go hand in hand, right? You have to get the summary statistic, and you have to visualize it. Usually, sinasabi ko sa students ko, dapat parehas nyo yung ginagawa. Kasi hindi pwedeng visualization lang. Oo, tama, makikita natin agad yung sabi natin correlation, makikita natin yung mean, yung median and mode using data visualization. But you also would want to get the exact values. That's why you have to compute for the summary statistic. Right? And hindi lang din naman pwedeng summary statistic lang. Mas maganda kung papartneran mo siya ng data visualization in order for you to explain or to show what you're talking about using one picture, right? There's an example here. There's a group of, let's say this is grades, grades of students. We want to get the mean, the median, and the mode. Alam ko naman, all of us knows how to compute this already. So let me just give you the values for this. The mean of this is 56.6, right? If we're talking about central tendency, what we want to get is what is the center of the distribution of the data, right? So the mean is, the value should be around uh, center, nasa gitna, kaya nga siya central tendency. So if we're computing for the mean, that is 56.6. If it's median, that's 57. So nasa gitna, sila halos parehas. Kapag mode, 
notice that it's 54. Wala siya dun sa gitna. So, there are actually um, advantages and disadvantages of using these values, right? Just a review, your mean is your average value. Your median is the value separating the upper from the lower half. And the mode is the most frequent occurring value. Let's just go over the advantages and disadvantages of using these measures. The first one is the mean, right? For mean, you can calculate it for both continuous and discrete numeric data. Okay, pwede mo siyang compute for both continuous and uh, discrete. But it cannot be calculated for categorical data at, and it can be easily influenced by outliers. Let me give you an example. If we put a value 1 here and 100 here, which are obviously outliers, or sabihin natin meron pa tayo ditong 1,000, mabilis na mahahatak si mean, right? Ma magbabago yung value niya, wala na siya sa gitna. Okay? So, influence siya, easily influenced by outliers. That is the advantage of median. If you do not have a, a good distribution of your data, it would be best to use median. Okay? Kapag hindi symmetrical yung distribution. Because this is less affected by outliers. Let me go back to the example that I had earlier. If I put 1 here and 1,000 here, my median is still 57. Right? Yun pa rin yung value separating the upper and the lower half of this values. Okay? So, mas ano siya? Less affected siya ng outliers. However, it still cannot be computed for categorical data. That's why we have the mode, which can be calculated for both numerical and categorical data. However, it may not reflect the center of the distribution very well, as we have seen earlier, 54, right? It's not on the center of the distribution. And of course, when the data are continuous, it may not have no mode at all, right? If you have a continuous data, or a continuous numerical data, pwedeng walang mode yan. Those are measures of central tendency. And now let's go to dispersion. We have here the range, the IQR, or the interquartile range, and the standard deviation. Um, hindi ko na ata kinumpute dito, but let's go over the um, advantages and disadvantages. So let me just go over that. Um, the range is of these um, values that is just 60 minus 54. That's your range. It's just the maximum value minus the minimum value. The IQR, on the other hand, that is the median of the upper minus the median of the lower. So let's divide the data. This one is the lower half. This one is the upper half. That is, I think, 58 minus 54. Okay, doon pa lang siguro kita nyo na advantage ni range versus, ah, sorry, IQR versus range. And that's the standard deviation. We all know how to compute this. I think this is the most um, or the more popular measure of dispersion. Range is very easy to calculate. You just subtract the maximum from the, ah, you, so you just subtract the minimum from the maximum. However, it's very sensitive to outliers and it does not use all of the observations in your data set. Ganun ulit, maglagay tayo dito ng 1,000, maglagay ako dito ng 1, your range uh, is not reflective of the dispersion anymore. Right? That will give you a range of 999 even if that is not, that, that does not represent the dispersion of your data very well because those are outliers. That is again solved by your interquartile range or IQR. It's not very sensitive to outliers because you're talking about the median values of the upper and the lower half of the data. You're not considering the, the extreme values, right? You're considering the median of the upper and the lower half. However, again, it still does not use all of the values in the data. Then papasok si standard deviation or si, um, si variance. This, this one is based on the every item of the distribution. However, it can be impacted by outliers and extreme values. Right? And so we're done with the summary statistics. Actually, those are just two of the things that you can compute, the measure of central tendency and also uh, the measure of dispersion. But there is also, um, there are also other um, statistics that you can compute for this summary statistic. Now let's go to data visualization. We're going to use this library later. 
in order for us to visualize what we have seen in our data. I'll just go over some plots that you can use. That is the scatter plot, the dot plot, the histogram, box plot. I think I've also included um, the bar plot, right? So the first one is scatter plot. You only use this, and actually, ito madalas may mga nakakamali sa visualization ng data. So it's very important to know kailan mo gagamitin yung isang specific na na plot or na graph in order for you to represent or to say yung gusto mong sabihin about the data, right? So the scatter plot is used if you want to show the relationship between two variables, specifically two numerical variables. In this example, we have here the x-axis and the y-axis. If the value in your x-axis increases, as you increase the value in the y-axis, then that means that there is a positive correlation, right? Pataas kasi siya. Habang tumataas to, tumataas din yung value dito, then there is a positive correlation between those variables. Negative correlation naman, um, as you increase the value here in the x-axis, the value in the y-axis decreases, right? So we started around 25, bumaba siya up until one, negative 125 here. So we are showing here a negative correlation between the two variables. Ngayon, kapag walang trend, makikita mo yung mga dots mo sa scatter plot kalat-kalat. Okay? That means that there is no correlation, there is no relationship between the two variables that you're comparing. Okay? The dot plot, uh, this is used when you're dealing with a single variable. Can, we can say that this is a one variable uh, scatter plot. So it's basically a tally, right? This is a representation na para siyang tally. So uh, we have an example here, the interest rate at around 5%. Well, this one is uh, rounded to the nearest percent. I think the original values are continuous, right? So... 5% here meron ka sa data set na tatlong observation na ang interest rate ay 5%. Around 10%, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are 8 observations ng interest rate ay 10%, and so on and so forth, right? So you'll use this if you just want to get a tally of a single variable. Now, if you're dealing with a continuous variable, Okay? You can use histogram. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Pag ang continuous var uh, variables kasi natin, yan yung may mga floating point numbers, yung may mga fraction, right? So this one, from 5% to 7.5%, that tally or the number of observation is around, I think, 11. Yun yung pinapakita sa atin ng histogram. From 7.5 to 10, the tally is around 15 so there are 15 observations with interest rate from 7.5 to 10. Okay? We're still showing the frequency or the tally here. But in this time, instead of referring to a single value, 5%, 6%, 7 up until 10, we are talking about range of values from 5 to 7.5. This is the tally. This is useful only for continuous numerical variable. Now, magkamukha si bar plot at si histogram, but visually, meron siyang difference. And actually, in use case, meron siyang difference. Histogram, you use this again for continuous variable. Bar plot, you use this if you are clustering together a, a group of um, data according to a categorical variable. Right? Categorical variable. Pag grinoop mo sila according to a categorical variable, you have to make sure that you represent it as a bar plot and not a histogram. The visual difference is there is a space in between the different groups. Dito, bakit wala? Because the values are continuous. They are related to each other, right? From 5 to 7.5, 7.5 to 10, and so on and so forth. The groupings are related together. Here, Different groups, magkakaiba talaga sila. There is no, let's say, relationship uh, or con uh, continuity within these groups. Okay? So, pag categorical, pag ginugroup mo sila categorical, uh, using a categorical variable, we use a bar plot. 
Okay, maraming nagkakamali usually dito sa dalawang to. But they are different. And the last thing is the box plot. This one shows the five number summary of your data. You have here your median. It shows you the median, the first quartile, the third quartile. Those are statistics that uh, you may also declare or share when you're performing your um, exploratory data analysis. There is the concept of lower whisker and the upper whisker. Tapos makikita mo rin dito yung outliers. Later, we'll see an example of a box plot. And that's it for this. Let's talk about what's next. But uh, hindi na natin siya i-discuss for this um, talk. Gusto ko na malaman, ano yung gagawin nyo after exploratory data analysis, right? We have represented, we have captured the data, we have represented it in a way that the computer can understand. We have, uh, we, we perform data cleaning, uh, we perform exploratory data analysis. So alam na natin, meron na tayong feeling, may, nakapa na natin yung data, na-explore na natin siya. Anong susunod mong gagawin, right? This is actually, these steps of data cleaning, data representation, and EDA is very important in various fields, in various uh, major operations. You can perform data modeling and analyze the data, okay? Only after you perform EDA because you have to familiarize, familiarize your data first before you actually perform modeling on it or uh, let's say data mining or machine learning. Kailangan mo munang gawin to, okay? And that's it for the theory. Um, I, I think I'll go over the slides, or sorry, the, the code now. Let me just close this. So we have a sample code here. Ayan. So we have a, an example code here. Actually, I think I gave the link so that you can access this also, but I'm running this locally. Um, so this is a notebook, a Jupyter notebook. We're using a Jupyter notebook in order for us to run or to perform exploratory data analysis using Pandas. Uh, merong short dito introduction on Jupyter notebooks. Um, if you attended the last talk, the last talk also used um, Jupyter Notebook. So there's some introduction here. Um, alam natin pag nagpo-program tayo, di ba? Meron tayong code. And aside from the code, we also want to or need to document our data. Um, Jupyter does that also. But in this case, we are running the code um, block by block. Hindi natin siya niraran ng one run. And the, the documentations are here. These are called ma uh, markdown cells. That contains the um, the, uh, the the documentation of uh, the code that follows it. So this is an example. And if you click this, makikita nyo paano siya fino format. So this is an example of a title. If you want to have a title, this is a heading, a subheading, and so on and so forth. Right? Um, you just click. Double click on a specific cell if you want to learn how to um, do that in Jupyter Notebooks. So this is an example of a markdown cell. If you want to navigate through your notebooks, there are actually various um, keyboard shortcuts, but more often than not, I use my mouse to navigate through the cells. And um, this is an example of a Python code, right? We're basically just adding 2 plus 5, which yielded the result 7. Okay, so I think let's go to the exploratory data analysis part. This part, we're just importing the libraries. That is NumPy, Pandas, and the plotting library. And for this example, we're going to use uh, Pokemon dataset, which uh, you can visit this link if you want to get the dataset. But the first part is focused on data cleaning. So we modify lang namin ng kaunte para magkaroon tayo ng um, dirty data kasi nakalagay na sa Kaggle um, na, nalinis na nila yun. So, if you want to read the data set, of course, you have to, to, to load the data set first. Um, you have this, um, you just call the read CSV function of Pandas. 
PD is pandas, then you pass the CSV file. Right? So, masustore na siya dun sa data frame. So, this is a data frame. And uh, the first thing, as I've said, that you have to call when you are performing analysis is the info function. This shows you the different columns in your data set, the number of those na um, may value. So we have 1028 here, and so on and so forth. You can also call the describe function. If you have the copy of the notebook, you can click on specific links to get the documentation for that file, or for that function rather. The describe function shows us per, um, per variable, how many yung may ganung value, yung, yung, yung hindi null yung value, what is the mean, what is the standard deviation, the minimum value, and the quartiles, and also the maximum value, right? Uh, gagawin niya to for all of those variables na nasa data set mo, na numerical. Now, let's perform some sort of cleaning, right? So, we have here a scenario. Let's say that we want to see the distribution of the Pokemon stat uh, statuses for a given generation. So we have to use the variables, the variable generation and the variable status, right? Before we do that, we have to check na clean ba yung, yung generation variable. Let's see that. The function that we're calling here is unique. Kapag, um, uh, by the way, this is our data frame, which represents the whole data set, this one. Okay, the whole data set containing 1028 values. Um, this one, we are isolating a specific um, column, which is generation. Let me just insert, or hindi na siguro. So we know that um, we have eight generations of Pokemon. The unique function will return to us all of the unique um, values for that specific variable, right? Kasi ma mamaya nakalagay sa data set uh, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 may nakalagay na first generation, third generation right? Those are multiple representations but in this example the unique function gave us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 okay? Isang, isang um, representation lang which is good. So I think all of these are valid. We do not need to perform some um, some cleaning on this Let's now go to the status variable. Status, ito yung, is it a normal Pokemon? Is it sub-legendary, legendary, or mythical? Um, nakita rin natin dito when we call the unique function. So this is the whole data frame. We're just selecting a specific column, which is the status column. We call the unique function to show us what are the unique values inside that variable. Okay? And I think wala namang cleaning na tayong kailangan gawin dito kasi um, tama naman yung values. Now, there's a different scenario here. We want to explore different types or primary types of Pokemon. We can call the types as elements. That is yung mga fire Pokemon, water Pokemon, and whatnot. Right? So, we are going to use this. This is the variable that we're going to use, the type 1. So we have here the whole data frame, the whole data set. Let's just select type 1. Okay, ito yung pangalan ng, co ng column mo. Then return to us what are the unique values there. Ito yung ni-return sa atin. And if you are going to lose, uh, to, to zoom in, right, meron dito mga naulit. Yung water mo. Okay, water with a small w with a capital W, tapos merong misspelling, right? Si ground, ganun din. Instead of ground, uh, instead of ground, merong ground. And for normal, ganun din. Normal, small n, capital N. So, problem of numerical or of uh, numerous representation. Uh, paano tayo nag deal how, how do we deal with this? Dito meron tayong ginamit na function na values count. This one just shows us per value for that specific variable, ilan yung observations na meron doon, right? Um, bakit natin ginamit to? Gusto lang natin makita ano yung pinaka-prevalent na representation. So, for example, sa water, ang pinaka-prevalent is the capital W. 
yung misspelling na water dito is seven lang, right? Water dito na small yung W is just 15. So, of course, it would be good to just use this representation. Okay, kasi yun yung mas dominant. Normal is less prevalent than the capital na normal, right? We can use the replace function. So, yung small caps na water, replace it with the capital. Normal na small yung N, change that with the capital. This one, misspelling, replace that with the correct spelling. And yung ito din, yung ground, replace it to ground. And if we check again after running this code, we so what we did here is we uh, this is the data frame collect uh, which contains all of the values. This is the data or the uh, the type one, the types of the Pokemon. We replace yung merong water to water and so on and so forth. Then we assign it back to the data frame. And if we check. The unique values, wala na dyan yung mga misspelling, yung mga small letters, and uh, yeah, the, the different representations. So that's a, a very small example, uh, limited example for data cleaning. Let's now go to the correct data set. So this one, ito yung original data set na walang modification. Um, I have provided here the different uh, description. I think we have around 40 or let's check we have yeah 48 we have 48 values or variables for this data set you can just read them if you want if you're interested with the different values in this data set um i have provided it here and we load the data set this is a different data set kanina ang niload natin is i think pokemon cs uh pokemon modified that csv so we are uh, loading a new data set, a new CSV file. We call the info function again just to have a feel of the data and the describe function. Now, we want to explore the data kasi hindi pa tayo familiar sa kanya. Gusto natin magkaroon ng kaunting feel kung ano ba yung laman ng data. The first, uh, at least one of our uh, mga nisip na question, out of all the Pokemons that we have here in this data set, Ilan kaya yung, uh, anong type kaya yung pinakamarami, right? That's a very interesting question, at least uh, in, in applications such as uh, if, you're, if you want to, um, to go into competitive uh, Pokemon, right? But anyway, this is just an example. Um, here, we're selecting, again, this is your whole data frame containing the whole data set. You're selecting this specific column the specific variable, okay? We call the value counts. Again, this one returns to us for a specific uh, value, how many observations yung gumagamit nun. So yung water, we have 134 now out of, I think, 800 plus Pokemon. Or 1,000, right? We have 1,000. Yeah, 1,028. So 134 of that are water type Pokemon. And this is the numerical summary, right? Ito yung, um, yung tally. But we, as I've said, we also would want to see this in terms of a visualization. So when you run the notebook, I'm just using a different um, scheme in my Jupyter notebooks. Kasi um, black yung background. But anyway, this is a visualization. And I'm using a bar plot because I'm grouping together the different observations according to um, uh, a categorical variable. This time, uh, the types of Pokemon. So water, kitang-kita natin, right? Ang pinakamarami. And ang pinakakaunti ay flying. Okay. What is the average? This is another question that you might want to ask. What is the average base HP of normal Pokemon? So we're going to use type 1 and HP. Here we're selecting uh, from the data frame, we're selecting the specific column, which is the HP. This is the life points. Okay. 
Um, you can also select multiple columns. Can ito ang sineselect lang natin ay isang column. So this will yield a series. But if you want, and in this problem, we're selecting two because we need two columns, type 1 and HP, this will yield a data frame. So this is a data frame, right? So a data frame, a smaller representation. Let's call the show function to show us the visualization for the HP. Right, so we are using, uh, we are, um, this, the HP is a numerical value. We can group, okay, the values into bins of 30, 30 bins, right, and show it on a histogram. This is an example of a histogram. So it's showing to us the distribution of the data and most um, Pokemon, ang base HP niya around 50 to, let's say, 70. Ang, ang peak niya is around 70. You can play around the bins by changing the parameter. Let's say we want to investigate further. Instead of uh, investigating the whole data frame, we just want to investigate yung normal Pokemons lang, right? To do this, we have to consider only the observations in which the type 1 is normal. How did we do that? We have here the Pokemon data frame. This is their type 1. If their type 1 is normal, then select that. Include that into this data frame. Notice, um, upon selecting lahat lang ng laman ng data frame natin, starting from index 20, 21, right? Ang nakuha lang natin lahat ng may type 1 na normal. Okay? There. So, Let's select that, assign that to a variable, and show that um, in a histogram also. Okay? The, pack, the, the peak is around, I think, uh, 70. Ito yung problem if, if you're just showing the visualization. You cannot get the exact numbers, right? So you want to also get the exact values. Um, as we see here, the distribution is positively skewed. And... How do, you, how do we get this, right? We have the data frame here, the normal, the, the data frame containing all normal Pokemon. We can get the mean, the standard deviation, and the count, okay? In this data frame, ano yung mean HP niya, ano yung standard deviation ng HP, at ilan yung mga normal Pokemon using the aggregate function. So this is an aggregating um, operation we're in, we're computing from all the values, we're computing the average, we're computing the standard deviation. It is as easy as that. So instead of hulaan natin ano tong value na to, na napakataas, na average value, we just get the mean here, right? We compute for it. And this will enhance what you have shared here in the visualization. So they really go hand in hand. Now, this is just another um, example. Mas ginawa lang natin specific. Instead of dealing with normal Pokemons, gusto rin natin makuha only the normal Pokemons na ang generation ay less than 5. Okay? Yung mga 5th hanggang 5th gen lang. So, I selected the data set for that. A, a, a chunk, a small chunk of our data set for that. Then, I use also the aggregate function to get, to get the HP, the, the mean HP, the median uh, HP and the standard deviation using the aggregate function to find out what is the mean, the median, and so on and so forth. Okay? Looking at the visualization, hindi siya symmetrical. Eh. So it would be good to, I think, use median in this case because the distribution, as we can see here, does not resemble uh, a normal distribution. Another example here, um, which type has the highest average base attack. I think this is the last one. So we need to consider the type 1 and the attack of the Pokemon here. So we have here the whole data set. Lahat ng Pokemon nandiyan. Right? So we group them according to their type. According to water Pokemon, flying Pokemon, uh, rock Pokemon. Then upon grouping them, nakita natin itong example na to kanina, we get the mean per group. Okay, the mean attack and the standard deviation. So yung bug daw, pag grinupo mo lahat ng bug Pokemon sa dataset, ang mean niya ay 71, 
ang mean attack is 71. Standard deviation is around 37, right? And you compute that for all of the types. Uh, alala nyo kanina kung hindi tayo nag-perform ng data cleaning. Yung water na capital, yung water na small letters, magkakaiba yan ang compute dito ng mean, right? So we need to combine them first because they represent the same uh, type of Pokemon. This time, we're computing still the same, but we're computing the mean and the standard deviation. Then after that, we uh, sort them, right? That is another thing that we can do given a data frame. We can sort the variable. This time, we're sorting according to the mean. Okay? So, para makita natin ano yung pinakamataas, yung may pinakamataas na mean attack. Nakita natin dragon, right? Around 107. And yung pinakamahina, at least in this example, is 68, yung ferry. Okay, this is, I think, the last one. Uh, instead of getting the mean, we're getting the median. Okay, alam na natin yung difference between mean and median, the advantage of the two. Um then we sort the values, we computed for the median and sort it according to the median. Instead of dragon being the, the one with the highest attack, nakita natin dito na fighting. Okay? But barely lang naman. Okay? And this is a visualization of it. Uh, medyo dark nga lang dito. So this is a box plot for all of the groups. We have here the bug the dark Pokemon up until the water. So this is the um, the box plot representation of that. Yung nasa gitna, that is the median value. And if we are to look at this one, this is the fighting, right? Pansin nyo yung median niya, yung pinakamataas. Okay? And this is the dragon, yun yung kasunod. Median is the green line. Okay? So this is a visualization that is very useful if you want to explain um, your, your values properly or just using one vis uh, visual means you can plot that using a box plot, right? The box plot shows that fighting Pokemons have the highest median among the different types of Pokemon. So that's it for this um, explore, exploration of data. After this, you can perform um, more um, data analysis since you have the first feel, the first look at your data. Okay? So, thank you. That's it for my talk. Hi, Aaron. So, I think let's just wait for um, some of our listeners to ask their questions. So if you have any questions for Aaron, um, don't be shy to ask them so that uh, Aaron here will be able to uh, provide those um, uh, answers to you, you know? So I think oh, my question ako, Aaron. No? So parang for our for our listeners, then why is it very important yung, yung exploratory data analysis? Um, if you are building a machine learning model, I think common yun no? na minsan uh, excited yung mga <laughs> students and even yung mga um, yung mga practitioners na mag jump immediately to building a machine learning model. Uh, why is it very important, um, yung EDA? Okay. That's a very good question. Actually, I've seen a lot of projects na tinatanong sa akin, Sir, bakit hindi kami magkapag-classify ng maayos dun sa data set? Um, well, hindi ko na-discuss kanina, pero there are some pre-processing steps pa na pwede mong i-perform before you delve into machine learning. Let's say, for example, that you have a data set, uh, um, a tabular data set, right? So, meron kang mga numerical values doon, and you want to perform clustering. We know that in clustering, we have formula that measures the, the, the difference between one observation, one instance, to another, right? And if we have, if, if we are not going to do exploration, if we're going to dive into the actual um, clustering itself, magkakaroon niya ng problem. Because you do not check the range of values, meron, pal meron ka palang values na sabihin natin yung um, one, one column, ang range of values is from 0 to 1. 
Tapos another column, ang values niya is from 0 to 100. So ang may pinakamalaking difference doon, of course, the one, the observation or the column with the, the values from 0 to 100. Without data exploration, without looking at the data first, without um, having a feel of the data first, maka makaliktaan mo yun. You're training for hours and hours and um, paglabas ng result, uh, hindi maganda, right? So you have to first explore those. You have to look at your data first before you perform the more um, computationally expensive operations. Um, tsaka din no, parang you were presenting a table. May difference ba yung data preparation? Pag, for example, audio file yung ginagamit or images yung ginagamit. Um, if you have any experience with that, maybe you can share so that our listeners can like understand. Kasi, so, kasi kanina sa example natin, ba, tabular yung, uh, yung data. Paano pa kaya, paano kaya pag uh, yun, images or video or um, other forms of data yung uh, in-analyze natin? Yeah, so um, most of my examples or experiences is on image because I'm working at uh, working on uh, computer vision projects. So magkakaiba yung pre-processing steps. Um, in representing them, I think uh, may commonalities, but if we're talking about the pre-processing steps, um, in images, there is this concept of mean subtraction, meaning you're subtracting the mean values for the data set uh, para... Uh, b before you actually feed it into a convolutional neural network, uh, meron ding rescaling of values, katulad nung nakita natin kanina sa tabular data. Uh, those are some examples na there are um, domain-specific techniques that we can apply to certain application and certain types of data, certain mediums of data. So, yeah, iba-iba pa sila. Um, compared uh, from one medium to another. Sorry, hindi ko rinig yung audio. Hey, sorry, thanks. I, I think we have a question from our audience. No? Um, so, ano yung power, for example, ng using Pandas compared to other yung, data analysis tools? So, yeah, for example, IBM SPSS or using R, parang What's unique about pandas? Okay, so I'm not actually familiar with SPSS and those other tools. I think the only uh, delineation between them is gamitin mo kung saan ka comfortable. And um, right now I'm using Python because and, and pandas of course because most of uh, the technologies that I use for machine learning are also in Python. So kaya yun yung ginagamit ko. Uh, with regards to explore, exploration of data. It right. really boils down to anong tool ka ba comfortable? Yeah, I agree with you on that, no, Aaron, kasi majority of um, machine learning frameworks are built on Python. So you have PyTorch, you also have like TensorFlow. No? So if you really are, uh, are new and would want to explore um, machine learning and ano ba yung mga technologies and tools, I think Python and Pandas would be Definitely a great tool for you to do exploratory data analysis. And thank you so much, Josh, uh, for, for that question. Again, for others, no, if you have other questions, um, let, let's use the time that we have, no, since minsan lang tayo ano, mag-raise some presence si Aaron. Um, so another question, uh, Aaron, is if you're going to build, for example, your data set, sometimes it's either you use an existing data set, you clean them, and um, pwede rin na ikaw yung gumawa ng data set. Ano kaya yung mga good practice that you would want to apply, no? especially if you will be the one to create your own data set from scratch? Okay. It's a very good and interesting question. Um, I, I mainly deal with data... I, I haven't really performed data collection because most of the time I use readily available data. But I think good practices na nababasa ko is um, they have this, um, well, if the data set is controlled, minsan yung mga, for example, yung images, most of the time, um, yung, yung setup nila in collecting the data, let's say, for example, face data, controlled in sense na uh, parehas ng resolution, parehas ng... Um, ng lighting, 
that is of course if the data set is controlled but um as we all know if the data set is con in, in a controlled environment um, it does not reflect what we have in the real world right so iba pa yon sa iba pa yung mga practices na ina-apply nila if uh, you're going to collect data from the real world or outside especially on image data so it would be good if you're collecting data to have a um, let's say if you're if you're collecting a data for classification maganda siguro kung yung mga classes natin um, pare-parehas yung number of instances or of observation and also one good thing that you have to remember is you if you're going to build a data set it should be there should be a clear difference between the training and the testing set so that we can avoid data set contamination right if we're performing our evaluation on our algorithms so i think those are just few of the things that i can think of Okay, thanks for it, Aaron. We have another question from our audience. No? Uh, Rodrigo mentions it asking, what are other data formats supported by Pandas in addition to CSV? And is there a maximum number of rows and columns or even the file size that Pandas can handle? Okay, so um, based, of my, based on my example, most of the data sets that I'm currently working on is uh, formatted in CSV file. But I think it should be uh, nature or second nature to pandas that it can explore or uh, upload or uh, work with other data format. Though I haven't really used uh, any other data formats compared to CSV files. And in terms of the maximum number of rows and columns or file size, hindi ko pa siya ta actually na stress test no? kung ilan. Pero it should handle very big data sets. We can look at the documentation for that. Baka ang limitations pa nga is yung, yung, yung machine natin. Pag tinatanong natin yung maximum number of rows and columns uh, that we can process using Pandas. All right. Um, thanks for that answer, no, um, Aaron. I think from our side, ano pa, uh, what do you think are other resources that our participants can access and ano, ano, um, search in order for them to learn more about exploratory data? Analysis, we know that we have a short time to cover everything, right? And it's hard to compress everything into an hour. Um, what will be the next steps, especially for those who are joining us today? Um, what will be your suggestion to them? Ano yung kailangan nilang aralin na susunod? Uh, at saan na ma-access to mga uh, information na ito. Okay. Most of our lectures, most of our resources that we develop for our courses, at least in the LSU, we follow certain courses abroad. So, tinitingnan namin yung mga, let's say, mga resources ni Stanford, resources ni, um, ano pa ba? We have one from, uh, yeah, Stanford yung nakita kong class. Uh, as, as I've said, the, the next step after exploratory data analysis is the actual operation. So you can perform, let's say, data mining. If you have a data mining data set, um, I'm looking at uh, resources from Stanford for that one. I think the course is CS246. The other one, uh, if, you're, if you want machine learning, specifically computer vision, meron din si Stanford. So usually Stanford talaga sinusundan namin. Um, that is CS231N. So um, other fields, meron din na uh, specific si Stanford, and this is these are readily available to us online. If you want to learn more about what is the next step after exploratory data analysis. Okay, um, another question from our audience: no? Does the pandas can run or generate nominal or ordinal variable? Okay, um, nominal and ordinal variable. Most of the generation, I leave that to NumPy. Doon ako usually nag-generate. I'm not sure if there is a function specific for generating values in Pandas. NumPy yung gamit ko. So it's a NumPy library who would be able to yes. do this, right? Okay. Mm -mm. Okay, since our, ano, wala na tayo at ang questions from our audience, um, thank you so much, Aaron, for um, your time and for sharing your expertise um, with our audience today. 
Um, where can they where, where can they reach out to you, Arden, if they have if they would want to engage with you? Um, sa kanila pa ding mahanap. Uh, through email or Facebook, you can just search for uh, my name in Facebook or you can search for my profile sa Google DLS website. So my email is there. You can just type my first name that's Arden that Anchokia at dlsu.edu.ph Okay. Um, thank you so much, uh, everyone, um, for your time and for, for joining us. Thank you so much, Aaron. And looking forward to see everyone here on our, ne on our next session. No, thank you so much and have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.